Good morning. Good morning and welcome as we gather for worship on this uh, interesting day after an interesting day. Let's put it that way. Um, depending upon where you were, depending upon what the temperatures were, you either got rain, sleet, ice, snow, thunder, lightning. You get the picture. And, and, and several people asked me this morning, how was, uh, how was the drive-in this morning? And my first question to them was, can a pastor say crappy? And but most of them said, yeah, I think you can. Well, it was crappy. Um, it, actually, it actually was. Um, you know, if anyone enjoys uh, ice skating, and this, you know, I should have put this out for our two uh, hockey teams. If you wanted to get some road work in today, just put on your skates, get to the edge of Laverne, and take that back road all the way to Beaver Creek because you can ice skate on the entire thing. So, no, it wasn't fun, but we make it. So, it's March. We love it here. I should make you guys say that. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, that's all right. Good morning and welcome as we gather together on this day that God has blessed us with on this first Sunday in the season of Lent. Our radio broadcast for this week's worship service is in loving memory of Norman Annenson from the Neil and Jean Hoven family, and we thank them for their gift of sponsorship. A reminder that this Tuesday, March 8th at 6.45 p.m., we will have our ministry meetings, and that's followed by 8 p.m., the PPC meeting. So, uh, so committee members, please uh, mark that on your calendar. A reminder also that we begin the season of Lent in earnest this Wednesday evening with the first of our Wednesday evening Lenten services. Worship service will begin at 645 and prior to that we will have a uh, soup supper between 5 and 630 p.m. Um, and a free will offering um, goes to the Grace Youth. So please uh, come, for, uh, come for the soup. Uh, stay for what I think you're going to see is probably kind of a unique uh, midweek Lenten service. A couple of other announcements to bring to your attention. This morning, immediately following worship, the first communion class will start for fifth graders. One parent should be in attendance with each student. Uh, we will meet at uh, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. this morning down in the fireside room, so please uh, keep that in mind. March is Rock County Food Shelf Month for Grace Lutheran Church, so please uh, each of these weeks or even in the midweek too, come with your donations and if you'd like to make a cash donation you can do that in the office. Also uh, in the narthex on the red drape table are order forms for Easter lilies and mums so if you have not done that uh, yet and would like to do that in memory of someone in honor of someone or just because Easter lilies and mums are really nice uh, please uh, please make sure that you do that. On our prayer requests for today we include Georgia Cayley, Megan Cayley, Betty Heyman, Marsha Moeller, Arla Bakken, James Harner, Walter Toftland, Brent Swenson, and Haley Swenson. Please keep them in your thoughts and in your prayers this week. And then it's not as big a deal as it used to be when I first started in the ministry, but um, this coming weekend, um, we, uh, we kind of jump ahead. I've always not liked that. But we spring ahead because it's spring, and that means that we lose an hour of sleep, too. So, uh, so just make sure that, uh, that you set your, your clock. Most of us now have cell phones, and the cell phones do it automatically, but the nice thing is for both of uh, my vehicles, um, um, in an entire year, now once again, my clocks will be right in both my cars. And so that's always a nice thing to have as well. Uh, please, uh, please note all the things that are in our glimpse and make sure you take it home with you. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Take a moment to uh, share that peace with those around you this morning.
Our worship continues with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another as we take a moment of silence for self-examination. most merciful God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, that God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first reading is from Deuteronomy chapters 6, verses 10 through 19. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you a land with fine large cities that you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewed cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The Lord your God you shall fear, him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. Do not follow other gods, any of the gods of the peoples who are all around you, because the Lord your God, who is present with you, is a jealous God. The anger of the Lord your God would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you from the face of the earth. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massa. You must diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his decrees and his statutes that he has commanded you. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, so it may go well with you, and so that you may go in and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you, thrusting out all your enemies from before you, as the Lord has promised. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, and verses 9 through 16. Let us read responsibly. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, you will say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. No evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guide you, guide you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper, you will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Our second reading is Romans chapter 10, verses 8b through 13. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Our Holy Gospel for this morning comes from Luke chapter 4. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. (coughs) Just a reminder for the children, there there won't be a children's message during Lent, but there are Tootsie Pops on the back table for you to grab. If you're... (laughs) all right so yeah don't forget that and if the little ones want to go and grab one right now that's fine with me as long as it's okay with mom and dad they're on the table back table with the red tablecloth all right today is the first sunday in lent throughout the season of lent on sundays we'll be focusing on god's promises and how they have been kept showing god's faithfulness even when we aren't always good at keeping up our end of the deal. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is basically a speech that Moses gave to the people of Israel at the end of their 40 years in the wilderness as they were on the cusp of entering the land that had been promised to Abraham. They were reminded of the highlights of the journey how after they left Egypt, Moses had led them to Mount Sinai, and God gave the people the Ten Commandments on stone tablets. He reminded them that they had wandered for 40 years and recently had gone to battle against several local kingdoms, defeating them and taking over their land. Now here they are, about to go into the land across the Jordan, to do battle with the people living there and take possession of it, as God had promised. But these promises of God comes with a stipulation. As long as the people continue to worship and trust God, all will be well. But if they turn their backs on God and worship the gods of the land that they're taking over, if their trust in God wavers, God will not help them. Be on your guard against such distractions. Now, this doesn't mean that God doesn't love the people, but this that he's choosing not to help them because they are not honoring him. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus has just been baptized. He's in the wilderness. The wilderness seems to be God's favorite place to teach people. The Israelites for 40 years, and now Jesus for 40 days. Both the Israelites and Jesus were hungry. God fed the Israelites with manna, which literally means, what is this? And apparently, God did not, apparently Jesus did not eat food during the wilderness time. But the Holy Spirit was there with him, giving him spiritual substance, sustenance. During his wilderness time, Jesus was tempted or tested Three times by the devil. Well, at least three times, but three times that we know about. 
And the devil is cunning. The devil knows where our weak spots are. And he knew Jesus was hungry. So he said, if you are the son of God, command the stone to become bread. Now the devil knew exactly who Jesus was. So the if was not wondering, hmm, if, if you're God's son, are you God's son? But a knowing that he is, so it's like there, there was a certainty that he had the ability to take the stone and turn it to bread. So it's more like, since you are the son of God, then why don't you do this? Because you're hungry. But Jesus was not going to let a grumbly tummy make him turn his back on God. And he said, no. In their 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, the Israelites learned to trust God to have manna appear when it was needed. They trusted God, and God came through for them. So Jesus was telling the devil, one does not live by bread alone, but by trusting on the promises that God will provide. Then the devil thought of a different tack to take. Jesus was human, after all, as well as being God. So the devil thought Jesus might be persuaded to turn his back on God through glory, power, fame. The devil told Jesus he had the authority to give the power, glory, and fame to whomever he wanted. So why didn't Jesus just worship him and he would receive the power, the glory, and the fame? But Jesus knew the devil didn't have that authority. And that worshiping the devil would result in God turning God's back on him. As Moses warned the Israelites in today's reading from Deuteronomy. Then Jesus quoted from Moses' speech, The Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve, worship. And by his name alone you shall swear. Well, the devil tried yet a different angle. He took Jesus to the top of the temple in Jerusalem and challenged him. If you're the son of God, throw down your, yourself down from here. And then he quoted from Psalm 91, which we read responsively a few minutes ago. He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. What the devil said sounded legitimate, but he was twisting scripture around. Yes, these are promises of God's protection, but the devil was using them as a dare or a demand. Jesus didn't fall for it. His response, also from today's reading in Deuteronomy, was do not put the Lord your God to the test. Don't try to twist God's promises so that they'll benefit you and not really be the commands or promises that God made. This is exactly what Moses was warning the Israelites about. What happens when you test God and God says, fine, have it your own way? It doesn't turn out very well. But the devil was not totally done with Jesus, just done for now. Our reading ends with, when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. What was that opportune time? There probably were many unrecorded times during Jesus' ministry where the devil tried to lure him away from God. This may be one reason why Jesus often went up to the mountains or to secluded places to pray. But the final opportune time was when the devil worked on Judas, who ended up betraying Jesus, and the religious and Roman leaders who illegally tried and killed Jesus. The devil thought that he'd won, but he hadn't. We'll get to that story in about six weeks. God has made many promises, and God keeps them. 
God did protect the Israelites, as was promised, but God also turned away from the people when they turned away from God, as was warned, and returned to them when they repented and returned to God, as was promised. Jesus gave us an example of taking Scripture and God seriously, trusting in God and God's words. God, help us to trust in your promises and not be distracted, but look only to you. Amen. Please rise as you are able for our sermon song. In the course of this Lenten season, there will be certain changes that will take place with respect to uh, worship. One of those changes is a change from the uh, Apostolic Creed to the Nicene Creed. Uh, and I would ask now that you join with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we begin this season of Lent, help us, O oh Lord, to each and every day walk with your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as he walks towards the cross. Help us to never forget, O oh Lord, the sacrifice that your Son made so that we might live. A merciful Father. Gracious God, on this day, we look at a world growing increasingly more in turmoil. Heavenly Father, we ask 
that you be with the refugees. We ask that you be those who have been affected by the war between Russia and between the Ukraine. Lord, we ask that you intercede. We ask that you bring peace. We know you hear us, Father, and we trust in your word. Merciful God. Gracious God, this is a season that we are asked to look at ourselves. Heavenly Father, help us to do that. Help us to look at our sinful lives. Help us to know of all the times that we have just forgotten you. Have let you go by us. Lord, be with us during this Lenten season. Merciful God. And now in the silence of our hearts, we offer up prayers and petitions heard only by you. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. We continue with our offering song. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you are able, please rise. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join with me as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Communion this day will be continuous, and so uh, you'll go down the center and then go back uh, through the sides. Um, we'll start with two transoms first, and then we'll go from there. Please come for all is ready.
Sie ist weiß. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Our sending song, O God, our help in ages past. Now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>